Welcome to today's video, where we will be answering some crucial questions about diagnosing and managing acid base imbalances, specifically in cases of metabolic acidosis. This video will provide you with valuable information to help you make better clinical decisions based on the latest guideline. Let's get started. Should arterial blood gas measurements be performed in patients with a decreased plasma bicarbonate level when diagnosing acid base imbalance? Yes. Arterial blood gas measurements should be performed. This is to eliminate respiratory alkalosis, confirm the diagnosis of metabolic acidosis, and test for mixed acidosis. Is base deficit a better measurement than plasma bicarbonate in diagnosing metabolic acidosis? Base deficit should probably not be preferred to plasma bicarbonate in identifying patients at risk of metabolic acidosis. This is because clinical data comparing base deficit and plasma bicarbonate are scarce and limited. The two largest studies show that plasma bicarbonate below 20 millimoliter is a good diagnostic indicator of metabolic acidosis when compared to a base excess of minus 5 millimoliter. Base excess, B, is calculated from plasma bicarbonate, and offers no significant advantage in diagnosing metabolic acidosis. Is the plasma anion gap corrected for albumin better than the uncorrected plasma anion gap in differentiating acid excess from base deficit in metabolic acidosis? The anion gap corrected for albumin should probably be used rather than the uncorrected anion gap. Using corrected anion gap, especially in patients with a high risk of hypoalbuminemia, unmasks plasma acids when there is hypoalbuminemia, making corrected anion gap greater than anion gap. Is the Stewart method equivalent to the henderson hasselbalch method using the anion gap corrected for albumin for the diagnosis of the mechanism of metabolic acidosis? The experts suggest first applying the henderson hasselbalch method using the anion gap corrected for albumin for the diagnosis of the mechanism of metabolic acidosis. However, the Stewart method provides insight into situations unexplained by the henderson hasselbalch method such as acid-base imbalance secondary to blood sodium and chloride imbalance and complex disorders. Does the use of a diagnostic algorithm improve the etiological diagnosis of metabolic acidosis? The experts suggest using an algorithm to improve the etiological diagnosis of metabolic acidosis. This is one of those algorithms. Should the urinary anion gap always be calculated in metabolic acidosis? The experts suggest that the urinary anion gap should only be calculated in metabolic acidosis without unmeasured anions or obvious etiology. The diagnostic utility of the urinary anion gap, particularly in emergency rooms or intensive care, is questionable. The performance of this index is only validated by studies with a low level of evidence. Is measurement of venous lactate less effective than measurement of arterial lactate in diagnosing hyperlactatemia? A normal value of venous lactate can discount hyperlactatemia however, arterial lactate should probably be measured to confirm hyperlactatemia in case of increased venous lactate. Is the measurement of capillary blood lactate as effective as measurement of arterial lactate in diagnosing hyperlactatemia? Capillary blood lactate should not be measured to diagnose hyperlactatemia. Is measurement of capillary blood ketones more effective than measurement of urine ketones in diagnosing ketoacidosis? Capillary blood ketones should be measured rather than urine ketones when diagnosing ketoacidosis. Studies show greater specificity and a quicker diagnostic result with capillary blood ketones, with comparable sensitivity. Is the pH value useful to identify critically ill patients in case of metabolic acidosis? The pH value should probably not be used alone to identify critically ill patients. Most studies have failed to show any prognostic value of pH measurement, although its utility and severity scores combined with other parameters is recognized in some cases. Is lactate measurement useful to identify critically ill patients? Hyperlactatemia should be considered as a marker of severity in initial treatment. Numerous studies show an association between initial blood lactate and prognosis, and monitoring blood lactate during the first hours of treatment can help assess the response. What route of insulin delivery should be preferred during diabetic ketoacidosis? Intravenous insulin administration is preferred over subcutaneous insulin. This is because intravenous insulin facilitates restoration of water electrolyte balance, 
avoids repeated subcutaneous injections, reduces the risk of hypoglycemia, and ensures better control of the insulin dose. Should an insulin bolus be administered before starting continuous intravenous insulin therapy during diabetic ketoacidosis? An insulin bolus should probably not be administered before starting continuous intravenous insulin therapy in patients with diabetic ketoacidosis. Should sodium bicarbonate infusion be used in severe metabolic acidosis? Sodium bicarbonate should probably be administered to intensive care patients with severe metabolic acidemia, that is pH is less than or equal to 7.20, with CO2 less than 45, and moderate to severe acute renal insufficiency. However, it should not be administered routinely during circulatory arrest or in patients with diabetic ketoacidosis. Sodium bicarbonate can be administered in therapeutic management of salicylate poisoning, regardless of the pH value. Should renal replacement therapy be used in severe metabolic acidosis, and if so, in what situations? Renal replacement therapy should be used in severe metabolic acidosis in the following situations. In cases of shock and or acute renal insufficiency, experts suggest initiating renal replacement therapy if the pH is below or equal to 7.15 in the absence of severe respiratory acidosis and despite appropriate treatment. In cases of lactic acidosis suggestive of metformin poisoning, experts suggest early initiation of renal replacement therapy when there is an organ dysfunction or in the absence of improvement in the first hours of therapeutic management. In cases of methanol or ethylene glycol poisoning, experts suggest initiation of renal replacement therapy if the anion gap is above 20 MEQ, L or if there is renal insufficiency or visual impairment. In metabolic acidosis associated with salicylic acid poisoning, experts suggest initiation of renal replacement therapy when there is neurological involvement and or if the salicylic acid concentration is above 6.5 millimole per liter, that is 90 mg per deciliter, and or if the pH is less than or equal to 7.20. These recommendations are mostly based on retrospective observational studies and case reports, as there are no randomized controlled studies with mortality as the main endpoint comparing the initiation of renal replacement therapy in severe metabolic acidosis. Thank you for joining us in today's discussion on diagnosing and treating metabolic acidosis. We hope this information has been helpful and enlightening. If you found this video informative, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth discussions on various health topics. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, leave a comment down below. Until next time, stay informed and take care of your health.